Hello and welcome to Quartzlight, your car brochure channel. And in today's episode, the Vauxhall Omega. Welcome back and here on Quartzlight, we look at car brochures here on YouTube three times a week. So if you think that might interest you, you know, watch the episode, consider subscribing. But anyway, back to today's episode, the Vauxhall Omega, uh, manufactured by Opel uh, between 1986 all the way till 2004. It was kind of like in that sort of executive class, a large car, although it's kind of hard to think about large cars now with so many large cars around, but it was a big car back then. Now, um, the model we're looking at is actually the second generation or the Omega B that ran from 1993 until 2004. So let's look at today's brochure um, and see what we can see. Okay, so here is today's brochure showing a rather affection shade of red and you know this is your top of the range Omega CDX. So there is four different um, um, trim levels in this brochure so we'll certainly see them in the moment the brochure itself from March 96 in fact if I turn the brochure over you can see sort of the official sponsor of the Euro 96 and down the bottom the little Vauxhall badge because of course uh, this is a, a, a great a, a GB brochure this one so it is a Vauxhall one although in reality you know it's an executive car manufactured by a German automaker Opel so you know the badge chains for Great Britain to a Vauxhall badge and actually it was a bit of badge engineering all the way around the world because in North America it was the Cadillac Catera, um, in South America it was the Chevrolet uh, Omega, and then even if we look at Australia, there was a bit of re engineering that went on, but essentially it kind of like became the Holden Commodore third generation in Australia. I do believe, I'm not really an expert on the Australian market, but I think that's what it became. I know we've got uh, at least one viewer from New Zealand who would, who's a wealth of knowledge and I'm sure will be able to correct me there if that's not the case. Like I say, this is the second generation and uh, really very much in sort of that executive sector um, in the UK at this time. But anyway, let's open the brochure up and see what we can see inside. So first page now, having to fight a little bit with the brochure, I'm holding this page down, otherwise it'll just flop back again. I don't think the brochure has ever been fully opened properly. Um, but we can see another little image of that Omega CDX on the number, number plate, denoting that top model. And of course, you know, Unique with the Vauxhall version was this little V. Um, the Opal just had, you know, a circle in the centre and the you know, chrome coming down here. So a slightly different design grill, but essentially the same thing. Um, so let's uh, move on in the brochure. Um, I suppose we could actually just look at this little bit of a caption at the top here. Basically saying when Vauxhall set out to create the definitive executive car for the 90s, one basic principle was foremost, stress-free motoring. The belief was to influence every stage of the model's development. The result is a range of saloon and estate cars that embodies the highest standards of quality, safety and comfort. Okay, and the next page is this lovely shade of green. Um, this particular one looks like the CD. Sadly, the crease is just where the badge would actually be, but we'll see that in a bit, I, I would imagine. Had to result a little bit of a clip here because, like I say, it wants to close on me all the time. Although, overall, though, a very nice shape. It's an attractive looking car. I particularly like the rear, how it curves round. So, you know, we've got a very modern exterior design for the times, but we've still got the tradition of rear wheel drive, of course. Next page, we're back to that red top model CDX. It is showing the badge. So let's just zoom in on some of those little features. Now we can see them. So this is how they kind of they 
to uh, badge the trim levels at this time so we can see that CDX um, on that little rubbing strip and we'll see the various models as we go through the range four different models at this time um, and like I say at this time the CDX was the top model um, available but of course they had things like Elite and that which isn't shown here um, so four trim levels many different engine levels we'll see all them shortly um, another nice little feature like that, how, how it's badged at the back there and you know I do like the rear on the Omega now the text here other than saying traditional saloon values starts off by, by saying the uh, Omega saloon brilliant and combined style and function to create a vehicle totally in tune with the wants and needs of the modern executive motoring on the road every penny of Omega's 600 million development program shines through to reveal extraordinary levels of drivability and refinement the message is clear Omega quality without compromise and uh, they did sell well there was a lot of them on the UK roads at the time see one now I don't know what happened to them. all the old disappeared didn't they and yes it's not a two door like I said the fold is just not opening up I don't want to really force the brochure any more than that next page in this blue um, we're now showing that we've got uh, the Omega can be an estate model as well again this is the CDX version a little bit different isn't it than what we see in the Ford brochures it kind of like gets pretty quickly into the different uh, trim levels um, but of course here it's it actually takes quite a while before we get to the first trim so let's move on and then we've got a little bit of a look at the interior it does look a nice spacious comfortable place to be it's these big triple headrests we've got little bits of wood it's telling us in very small print down the bottom which you won't be able to see but it's telling us it's, this is actually the Omega CD estate let's move on and then I'm assuming that this is the uh, same, the CD estate, but this dashboard view. Lots of little controls on there, um, but very plastic it really overall. It doesn't make you go, wow, what an executive car, but certainly a functional car nevertheless. And then we get this page showing some of the little key features. I'm not going to go through them all. We don't have time. It is a big brush, this, so it's kind of like picking things up like, you know, you can get it as an automatic for example and then little things a lever wrap steering wheel etc and you know, it's nice sort of wood finish on some of the models and a split screen a sp split screen split seat um, to pass loads through or longer loads in that trunk area but if you want your Omega to look a bit fancy you certainly can do I mean look at those lovely leather seats they do look very like a soft leather as well so they're very no nice and you can see sort of the door cards and door padding on there it does really lift it with these seats now these leather seats are like an option on the cd or the cdx uh, as part of something that they call the executive package and then as we turn the page we get to this model this is called the omega select or the base model you can see little features missing off there like you know your fog lamps and your color coded door mirrors, mirrors have all been dropped. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hard to tell, but I would imagine there are just uh, wheel trims on there now. Um, no point looking at the rubbing strip, A, because again it's fallen on the crease sadly, but B, it didn't actually say anything on there like the CD or CDX, it didn't even say the select. It just didn't have a badge on there. I guess to go a bit more discreet it didn't really want to show that it was the base model i guess to our engine choices so if we zoom in we get a two liter injection or a two liter 16 valve engine and we can have a 2.5 injection v6 24 valve and we can even have a diesel if we really wanted a 2.4 litre turbo diesel available at this time um, we'll look more in the specifications at the end to see those though 
And then we get to the models proper, the four different trim levels, starting with this, the Omega Select, the base model. I will zoom in a little bit on this base model, um, sort of the base seats available, and we'll go through each trim level. So we'll start by reading some of this information. It says here the Omega Select presents business customers with a unique motoring concept. The opportunity to supplement their vehicle specifications from a range of personal option packs while paying benefit in kind taxation only as the option they really want. Um, so yeah, make that as you will. But you know, you can see the Omega is made really for business use on you know, your company car. It says here, but then Select isn't exactly short of desirable standard features either. Inside and out, the model bears many of the hallmark of the range, including new for 96, an electric sunroof with pre-select facility, and an updated eight speaker stereo system. And then it shows us some of these major features or so full-size airbag electronic abs power steering traction control if you pick the 2.5 v6 remote controls central lock-in engine deadlock electrically operated sunroof electrically operated front windows uh, twin electrically adjustable door mirrors green tinted glass uh, stereo radio cassette multifunctional display leather covered four speed four spoke steering wheel cabin pollen filter driver's seat with electrical height adjustment split folding rear seat and a load through facility so you know not badly equipped really for the time there's the different engine choices you can have uh, 2 litre injection, 2.5 turbo diesel, or the 2.5 injection V6 24 valve, available as both the saloon and the estate. And there is that interior, certainly a very much, quite a plain interior really, compared to the other models. Um, this door card in, in particular looks very dull and not very inspiring really, does it? And then we can see those sort of like wheel trims and we can also see that there's no sort of no badging at all on that rubbing strip. Now we get to this, your Omega GLS, sort of your lower mid model. Zooming straight away this time, I think at the picture. That's your GLS. And if we zoom in still further, we can just about make out the, how this particular model is badged they use the GLS badge in the center there looks like we have got alloy wheels um, no fog lamps yet though no fog lamps on there um, and then the interior you have no wood on there you know a little bit plainer than the higher spec models but certainly lots of equipment really so if we go up to the text is telling us to drive away in a Omega GLS saloon or estate and there's the feeling of quality that some integrity of build and intelligence of design that pervades the entire range tells us sort of the engine choices we have similar sorts of end choices as before to be honest um, and then if we look at some of the features on the GLS version uh, similar sort of thing to be honest with you we've got traction control on the v6 uh, i'm trying to look at something extra on there let's have a look electric operated front window so still electric only on the front windows um i won't say there's anything that really stands out possibly a front center seat armrest did the select have that i can't remember now to be honest we will of course be able to look at and compare the different models in the specs at the end but certainly alloy road wheels are something extra on this one now and again similar sort of thing similar engine choice on saloon and estate then we get to the um, upper trim levels with the Omega CD. Let's zoom in straight. It's a very nice 
colour this one and we can certainly see straight away that they are different alloy wheels now and you can just about make out the little CD badge in its usual spot uh, shame there's no front uh, shot on that just to compare um, but there's our interior looking uh, if anything very similar isn't it it's nothing really jumping out of us there engine choices still the same so it's nice you've got the engine choices on all the different trim levels that was a nice little feature and it talks you know typical your know, cd or you know thinking about fords is kind of like your gear isn't it uh you know emphasize on craftsmanship comfort convenience main features see if you can spot something there that the other model didn't have So we've got electrically operated uh, front and rear windows now we've also got a security alarm so that's better looks like we've got a better radio uh, compact disc player now and we've got air conditioning as well electrically heated seats wood effect inserts and we've got them frog fog lamps not frog lamps fog lamps on the front now and of course them alloy wheels but a different one so it was certainly a, a step up a lot more features when you got to the cd model then we get to the top model at this time the cdx so let's zoom in on that one and you can see the fog lamp straight away there that the cd also had uh, just about make out the cdx badge there on the rubbing strip and then if we move down you know we get wood key features let's have a look what it's saying here what's really gonna uh, move it up it says for 96 the cdx offers the perfect traveling environment with a new climate control so you know we're just inching up the range aren't we anything really standing out on there six disc cd player cruise control wood effect inserts but overall very similar like i say we will match um, them spec levels um, in the specification page at the end i guess i just about missed that just going back to that select model if we notice it's not the 16 valve is it on the select model it's just the two liter injection so i guess that was a little bit different on that model as well and of course there are accessories you could get featuring this little estate so i was showing things like you know your dog guard it's like different alloys mud flaps etc you could always get them little extras um, if you wanted and then we get to the specification so we'll certainly go through that okay so we're in the specification page now uh, starting at the top this is kind of like all your safety features and there's the different models to select GLS, CD, and CDX. Uh, the black dot obviously means that is actually standard on that particular model, which looks like everything on that page or that section is, apart from those which are titled FP, which is the family pack. Um, so you have that front passenger airbag, that uh, center three point rear seat seat belt and that um, those triple head restraints on the back seat part of a family pack that you can pick for the select and i guess that's a little bit different about this particular model is rather than picking each individual extra that you wanted it more came in these packages as we go down the page we can see those features continuing i'm not going to read all this out because you know it's um it'll take far too long but of course you can pause this screen if you do want to read each individual one out um, even a bit of a choice with the audio equipment there uh, dp here means part of the driver's pack and we'll have a look at those packs later on as we go down we've also got something called the ep that's that executive pack you know with the uh, leather seats so that must have been quite an expensive pack i would imagine the, the executive pack wp 
um, the winter pack or is it the weather pack? I think that one is. I think that's the weather pack. Again, we'll have a look at that in a moment. And the continuation of those specifications, heating and ventilation, interior lighting. Then as we go down, we get these additional interior features. So for example, wood effect inserts on doors, that's on your CD and your CDX, as you would imagine. And then if we go down still further, we get to the security. And then it gives you an idea of these special packs on here. So SP is the summer pack, so air conditioning, electrically operated rear window sunblind. Uh, select models additionally gain rear passenger ventilation outlets, rear cigar lighter and front seat centre armrests. WP, the weather pack, integral front fog lamps, heated twin jet windscreen washer nozzles and electrically heated front seats. The FP, the family pack, front passenger, full size airbags, free seat, head restraints, centre three point inertia, rear seat belt. And then we've got the driver's pack. Let's move that over a little bit. The driver's pack is here. So we get a uh, look like an upmarket stereo radio cassette player, driver's seat tilt and lumbar adjustment, front passenger seat and fold flat facilities, and electrically height adjustment. And then finally the EP, the executive pack, uh, leather seat trims, electrically heated rear seat. Um, so that's interesting, isn't it? electrically heated rear seats on that one. Photo uh, chronomatic anti dazzle rear view mirror, driver's seat with manual lumbar adjustment, electric fore aft height and tilt adjustment, and three position memory includes rear view mirror uh, and both door mirrors, front passenger seat with electric fore after rake height and tilt adjustment. So that EP, the executive package, was like I say, it must have been an expensive one, but you did get a lot with it. And then the mechanical options, the exterior lighting, um, the wheels and tyre packages, or options should I say. So alloy wheels on the uh, GLS CD CDX, so just that base select having those steel wheels. And then these sort of, it refers to exterior and convenience features. And then this next part is really just uh, visual pictures of what we looked at already. So the top being the summer pack. Same wording, just with little images this time than the weather pack. Weather pack incidentally gets these front fog lamps so you could make your select look like a higher spec model. And I guess that's the why it was called select. You could select these packs to make it a higher spec model. The weather pack, oh sorry, the family pack, I do apologise. The driver's pack. And that um, executive pack. And then it's kind of like looking at the colours and trim. So these are your seats for the base two models, the Select and the GLS. Uh, two different colours available. This grey mercury and this black mercury you can see with these low models they've got like this sort of two-tone seat and then if we move up the range this is your top two models the cd cdx having this different seating you can see the, uh, the what's it what it refers to as a stratford velour and a black stratford oh sorry a gray stratford and a black stratford and you can also see sort of the bits of wood there showing that it's the highest spec models as well and then of course them really nice seats you can get as an option on the CD or the CDX with that um, executive pack. A choice of grey leather or black leather. And then if we move down still further, here are sort of the exterior colours you could get. So glacier white, burgundy red, uh, and then your uh, two coat metallic star silver and diamond black. And then your two coats, 
pearl scent colours um, pearl or sea blue nautilus velvet green satin red magic grey and titanium looks like some of the colours weren't um, available for all of them. It looks like you couldn't actually get those standard solid colours on the um, CDX um, on either one. You couldn't get it leather or, or non-leather versions. You couldn't get that glacier white or burgundy red, which is unusual. Not available on them top two models. And then it shows you those three different engine choices. And a bit more information about those engines I've not got time to look through all that now but there are your different engine choices that are available and then of course your fuel economy figures for the different versions on those your diesels far more economical and then we've got your engine and transmission choices quick look at sort of dimensions etc of the uh, saloon and estate your engine availability and insurance groups the all important performance figures for those who are interested there we go and then finally we've got up here load space dimensions it looks like load capacities as well limbs there at the three of the different audio choices finally it finishes on how that rear badge would look and the date there March 1996 so that comes to the end of this particular brochure review but if you do have any memories of this particular car please do Jot that in the comments, always interesting to see. But for now, we'll say thank you so much for watching. Please do like and subscribe. We'll see you very soon. Take care and goodbye.